I am planning a release party sometime in December. Please let me know uh, dates that work, et cetera, et cetera. And I was thinking of trying to do it at like suspenders or something, but I don't know. Uh, SQ from uh, NYC Wisp. You know about that place. Okay. Right. Surely you of all people have something to tell us that we don't know. <laughs> I got an Android. Does that count? That yeah, counts. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't buying it. What? Was there a line or anything? Or? I got it pre order you know, in the mail on Monday. So Did you break it yet? So far, no, I haven't broken it yet, but I dropped it once. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to drop. It's a good sign. Any other announcements? <coughs> well, then, oh. without further ado, <coughs> on. Hmm? Um, next week on the 30th, we're going to do a presentation on Puppet at the Open Solar Future Group meeting. So if anybody's interested. I'm very interested. Uh, where and when? Um, I'll send a note to the mailing list. Okay. Oh, you might as well. It's the... It's going to be at the Sun Building, but uh, yeah. near Grand Central. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's the, the place on Park, right? Yeah. Right. Anyone else? Reason Park, I think. And it's probably going to be 6 30 on the 30. Well then, um, tonight, uh, Paul Charles Letty is going to give us a technical overview of asterisks. Please give him a big hand. to give away for free, so I'll give you a pointer to the free asterisk book. So if you go to this site, uh, here's a link right here to the book that's showing right here. So but I guess a bunch of people wrote this together online, and it was a, a, like an open source book, one of the first, and then they turned it around and printed it and started selling it, and so they keep putting it online, it's a little bit hard to find there, so. Could you put that up and leave yeah. it Can everyone see that? So, yeah, and so the, the talk is here as well. If you want to download the PDF for some reason, like the slides I'm going to show, here's the book, um, my contact information, and here are the actual config files I'll be keeping in after. So if you have any, you can uh, grab this if you want. Uh, I'd like to think of this as So I'd like to think of this as like an asterisk hello world presentation. I'm just going to get it up and running, kind of showing off how you can just run it right here on this laptop and start calling people, and I think that's pretty impressive. Um, Could you talk into the microphone? Yeah. Or, or close. Sorry. Well, I'd rather not. Can, who can hear me? You can't hear me? Okay, I'll try to talk louder. Um, I'm going to follow the slides that I brought. Um, try to like It's kind of like a script I'm going to follow. And uh, let's look at that. All right, so you're probably wondering who am I? If you can't see something, let me know. Uh, I started off as an electrical engineer right out of uh, high school as a sophomore, and I really didn't like it. So I became a music major. Um, after that, I had to make some money, so I got into computers and started work doing consulting in offices. I eventually became a web App engineer and a and then the dot com boom came. I was part of that. I was also part of the bus. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then just when everything was drying up, Amazon let me go and work there for a year and a half. So I got to see the inside of Amazon. And then after that experience, I decided I don't want to do web app development anymore. 
um, and turn to a, into a Linux systems administrator, which I'd already played with it a lot before anyway. And I worked in Portland for a while, and now I'm in New York City. I'm an INTJ, if anybody knows Briggs Myers, Myers Briggs. We're like the Uber thinkers. So, just an interesting fact. Um, so about this talk, this, po this talk is uh, not about all the fancy things you can do with asterisk. Asterisk is like Unix. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with it. You can go on and on forever about it. So I'm just going to do a low-level le low talk about getting it up and running. Uh, I'm not going to talk about call centers, 800 number routing, high volume voice services you could do with asterisk. Um, I'm going to show you one example, though. What I think, it's a new product, and I'm pretty sure on the back end they're probably using asterisk. Like my, an, a friend of mine who has set up a phone system up in his office called me and he's like, can we do this? So this is basically a site. Um, if you call their number, you can, you can uh, go right to somebody's voicemail instead of having to talk to them. So I was like, sure, we could do that. You know, we could do slide dial, but there's just one little problem. We'd have to figure out how to uh, circumvent phone ring. Somebody's phone ring, basically. So. Like that? Yeah. You slide dial if you're going to call them. Um, let's see. So I wanted to start off right away with giving you some pointers about how to learn more about asterisk. So the, the main site for uh, if you have questions about how something with asterisk, something doesn't work, this is really the site you can you go to you just to search and every topic is covered on, on here. It's a wiki so you can update it. You just create a user. You can have your own um, page on here, a user page. It's a really great resource. And then the other thing is the free book that I already mentioned. It pretty much covers everything. Okay, so what is asterisk? A lot of people have a confused notion about what asterisk is. They think it's VoIP. VoIP is, it's not really just, I mean, there are a lot of things that are VoIP. It just means that you're sending voice packets over a network. Asterisk is a PBX. So what's a PBX? A PBX is like when you have a small office and you have a phone system in there and you can dial 101 for Bob or 200 for sales, things like that. That's those are called extensions, and Asterisk does that. Um, voicemail is built into Asterisk. You just create an extension, and pretty much automatically you get voicemail. Uh, it also sends those voicemails to email if you want to do that automatically. Um, you can route the calls through, the, through, the, through your internal system, or say somebody calls up and they press, you know, you can have an IDR saying press 200 for sales, 300 for billing. That kind of thing. So that's really what Asterisk was built to do. Um, it also does conference calling if you want to have like five people call in from the outside and a few people from the inside and all meet in a room, have a conference call, that's all built in. Okay, so here's just a simple diagram. What is voice over IP? So you just can't have any analog, basically. You're just sending packets over an IP network between two phones. Um, so here's where um, asterisk and void collide. Here on the left you have like an asterisk system with a couple of phones hanging off of it registered to the asterisk server. And then you can use asterisk to register one of these void providers on the outside who will talk to the real phone system and then you can call your mom and she can call you. So. That's really like how you get back into the regular. Um, the PS, a PSTN is where like your normal phone company. That's what that means. So here's a definition of the PSTN. It's the public switch telephone network. Like uh, AT&T, Sprint, Verizon. All right, so now I'm just gonna like get the code and build it on my computer and get it running. So where you would grab the code is uh, 
from this site, which is asterisk.org. Let's go to the downloads. And I'm using one for tonight, so you just download the tarball. See, I have the tarball I've already unpacked it, so I just go into the directory. Can you ask the screen a little bit to the right? It's got a portion of the tarball. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me tell me if I. Um, uh, is that any better? Well, the left margin of things. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. That's good? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, of course, you just do, like, I don't know if everyone's built code before you do a config. Oh, hold on one second. I just clean that. Apple Dollar. huh? So, you do a configure. If anybody has a machine here, you can follow along. This isn't one of these packages that requires you to put yourself in a different directory than the source directory, like GCC does. No, not this one. All right, so there, it's configured, and I'll start making it. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll just talk about who invented uh, asterisk and the company that he created. So, Mark Spencer is like a guy from Alabama, lives in the country, has like an ATV on like a track, and he started a Linux consulting company in Alabama, um, needed a phone system, looked at the different commercial things that are out there, like Nortel has a, phone, a PBX, and uh, decided to write his own PBX, and I think he got in you know, into more than he thought it was going to end up being. And he just wrote, wrote this huge system. Everyone was really, everyone in the Linux community wanted something like this. And then he did it and he made it open source and wasn't making any money off of it. Um, people were using it and then at some point decided to make money off of it and started doing the hardware cards that you would plug into your server that would let you connect in with analog phone lines or T1. Um, <coughs> So that company is called Digium. And that's where I got this code from the Digium site. Yeah, the commercial side of that is Digium is the commercial area. Yeah, so Asterisk is totally free, open source, but then you can download a module called Zaptel, build it, and then it will, it's the driver for these cars that give you themselves. What's the length of the uh, license agreement for GPL? Yeah, it's GPL. Alright, so there it's built. And normally you just do a make install here, um, but I, it's a little bit um, tricky, so I don't want to take any chances. It's a, little, it's a hard to get up, so I just want to not do that part. But if you did uh, install it, you might also want to do make samples, and that's going to put the necessary configuration files in Etsy asterisk. So if you look in Etsy asterisk on my machine, See, these are the basic core comp files. That's really all you need. Um, Is that enough? And then you can just start up asterisk on the command line. Command line. Make sure that your root when you do this. The C will bring you into a console, and the B's are just saying be very verbose about what's going on. Like if a call comes in, 
you want to see everything that's going on. All right, so now asterisk is up. Um, but what I want to, let's see, let me follow these slides. So yeah, I talked about moving the comps. I'll just do make <coughs> samples. Um, so the core files that I'll be changing are the extensions.com, uh, users.com, facif.com, and IAX, which I'll explain more later. Um, so there are two basic protocols when you hook a phone into the asterisk server that you should know about. One is called SIF and one is called IAX. Um, the SIF protocol connects to asterisk over port 5060 to make some agreements between the phone and the server about where the media is going to actually, where the actual voice traffic is going to go over. But it picks a random port way up in the high range and that's where your voice actually goes over. The reason I mention this is because if you're natting the phone through a, through a firewall, out of firewall, or into a, into a system through a firewall, you're going to run into some problems, possibly. Um, just to read, so the, here's the acronym. It's called it's Session Initiation Protocol. So it's setting, it's initiating the connection, and then the RTP protocol is used to actually transport the media. That's what developed mostly for uh, Yeah. Um, so Mark Spencer decided he wanted to come up with something simpler that just used one port and didn't have the NAT problems. He wanted to make it NAT transparent. Um, also made it UDP, so if you, you know, if you drop a little bit of your voice, you don't really care. Um, and that uses port 4569 called the inter asterisk exchange protocol and um, after he invented it I think they used it for a little while and they realized that it was missing a few things so he came up with the second version so that's why you're going to see two here tonight. So let's go ahead and um, what, I can, what I'm going to do is hook up a soft phone on my computer to the server. That's So yeah, you can download this product for free. Um, I'll show you the site here. There so Counterpath makes it. Um, it. It's improved over the last few years. It's very simple to use and set up. Show you how to uh, point at asterisk once you get it up. Come in here, go to SIP account settings. So here you can see I'm already trying to set up an extension 222. So if somebody in house is trying to call me, they're just going to press 222, set the password to be the same thing. Um, and then I'm just pointing at the local host here. This would normally be whatever. IP you're running asterisk on. And this stuff automatically filled in and seems to work and I think it's something they figured out it would make it easier for people to uh, make a connection without a lot of without a lot of trouble. Alright, so now what I need to do is set up that two 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 extension actually. So first thing I'm going to do is go into this users.com file. This is a little bit new. It used to just be sip.com. Now they added this because I think most people think of these extensions as users and it just mm -hmm. makes it easier for people to understand what's going on. So even though sip.com is still here, it's not used so much to actually define users. So I'm just going to uncomment. Um, Uncomment this block code. Like this kind of, like these settings you can get off of voipinfo.org. They're very common. Um, 
here you can see I'm defining the username, the password, <coughs> pretty much all you need, need to set up, like a, maybe a mailbox. Does it have to be numerical, always? What's that? Does it have to be numerical? Um, I, I don't think it does. I can't remember for sure. I don't. What's the song that we call all? I mean, you could. The answer is yes. Otherwise, how can you dial it? Well, anyway, well, let's not get into the details the about that. that but 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 yeah, but it be, you don't route a call directly to an extension typically. I, when I first started playing with Asterisk, there was something where you could be like John at so and so, and it would actually call. Yeah. So, and like this, this phone actually, like you could type in a name like that, you know, at like IBM, and it should connect you. If everything's set up right. So yeah, it doesn't have to be a number, but I haven't really played with it that much. All right, so anyway, so I made that change, and then if I want it to show up, I just say um, module, let's see, module. Oops, Aren't you running as a demo? Hold on a sec. Module reload. So then it would reload that change that I just made, and you can see that it picked up 222. Two, two. Mm. Am I running as, what is it, demo? A demo. Like a service, like a dialogue. I don't understand what you mean. Demon. Demon. Oh, like it's asterisk is running the demon? Yes. So it's just a process. Just another process, but it. What was that? Disallow equals all. I don't. You can look it up, but I don't. Yeah. I know. If that's the normal codec used in the PSTN in North America. Okay. That, that's a codec. Well, we should be able to actually get a dial tone here or. Um, Like the rate went that it registers is a little bit strange sometimes. I might just want to restart this. Let me just restart the phone and it should pick up the change. Alright, so there. Now I got a, I can actually get a dial down. So you so that, I think that's like, that was a major event for me when I first started using Asterisk. Like, wow, I got a dial tone. But it's not, you know, it's just an artificial dial tone just to make you feel comfortable that you connected with something. Uh, is that your client generating the, the dial tone? No, I think it actually that? might be the client. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what about video? Is that your oh, just, video the yeah, yeah. Just a plus, and I guess... I mean, RTP actually transmits video as well. You know, it's not limited. It's any media that you. So I don't know the details of that. But Weird, isn't it? Um, Ad supported, I think this thing is. So let's let's see uh, what my slide said. Yeah, that's my script. All right. So I set up twenty two two two. Let's set up um, another phone using IAX. So instead of that file, we go into this IDX file. I'm going to comment out this block. Oh. Save it. Reload. And it should just work. I found. Um, one IAX phone that actually worked. So I'll show you that here. Loud Hush. There was another one I couldn't get it to work. It kept crashing. Like, brutally crashing. This works for nine minutes and then it's going to turn off. So it might happen a couple times. So you have to give them money if you want it to work more than nine minutes. So it's a Macintosh friendly application. Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, since it's Berkeley Unix. Just works. It says right there. Oh what? Oh oh, the loud hushes. Yeah. So you might be able to find IAX for Linux or Windows or something. I haven't really tried. So there's yeah, probably find it somewhere. Usually there's a key, just like Twinkle or a key. Or only quick five minutes. The key that does not support IAX protocol. No, it only supports it. There's another one for Zoifer works. Yeah, there's another one for uh, Mac OS X called X Meeting, which also works with SIP. I don't know if it works with IAX though. Oh, oh, and there's also, um, also for using SIP over uh, NAT, you need to 
a ton uh, called Simple Drawer, sold a GDP over that. Uh, and if you set up an S ton server, like there's S ton is the one I use. And uh, if you're not a network engineer already, you're going to become at least a mid-level network <laughs> engineer using asterisk and debugging situations if you're in a, like a real business environment. You get like uh, call, like one person won't be able to hear the other side of the conversation. You'll get weird echoes. So it can be a nightmare in it. And so you're going to going to start getting into the details fast. So I, it was good for me. It was like it forced me to learn a lot. All right, so these two phones are set up. So let's make our first call. Here's a... Did that work? Call rejected by remote. What's that? This call rejected by remote. Remote is probably the asterisk. Okay. Uh, You've got to be patient with pastors. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You have to reload the module. Yeah, you have to reload the module. I thought I reloaded it. I'm going to show you a new extension now. It's not that easy to do. Could it be that uh, when you re restarted, you lost the registry of the 222? No, he's still got that. He still has it. 222 internal does not exist. Mm -hmm. Oh, like I reversed this or something? No, what I'm saying, didn't you turn off the asterisk and turn it back on? There's a space at the end of that line. That matters. This no, Could I suggest just to X light turn off and turn it back on? Yeah, maybe. Close it open. That didn't really happen last time I gave this talk. I gave this talk last week and it went fine. So. And maybe your Macintosh is just being uh, a good You can there. get some weird, you know, situ situations with these. I don't know where X like went. All <laughs> rejected. You have to rebuild the module. Um, so what this brings up. A point I wanted to make editor? is um, in this log, one other good com file is this logger.com. And here you can set a full log. So mm -hmm. I recommend doing that when you're debugging issues and then mm -hmm. tailing the log here. And the stuff we're seeing here. But you'll see most of the stuff on the You console. see, and register C222, put the deck slide again. Your phone's not today. No, I'm raised. Now, now I'll try the call. You can't call yourself. Only is unavailable. Not found. But it's odd because it, when, you, when you do the reload, it only shows the uh, the two two two. It doesn't say anything about eight one zero one. When I restart after? Yeah, when, you're when you reload. restart, it's just, it when your module reloads. It forgets the race. All right, well, let me uh, look at this IAS file. Okay, I think this is the issue right here. I commented this out for the lecture. This stuff is basically um, allowing me to connect to an outside VoIP provider called Junction Networks. And you can get an account with them by a phone number. I'll get into all that a little bit more in detail later. All right, let's try <coughs> reloading. Here's the phone after nine minutes dying. <laughs> That's why I didn't know. It says five minutes on the website. The person you are comfortable with that. But that's because you're calling two. yourself. Yeah, that's This one is 8101, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you should be able to call yourself, is what I'm trying to do. Uh. Rejected by remote. Okay, so 
I think we're missing something. So, what could it be? And in our extensions, I think we have to make a definition here. We didn't, I didn't finish doing this. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry about that. So when I define this, you can see this context is going to internal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now in the extensions.com, I have to define an internal block. So, mm -hmm. say internal, and then there's a programming language. It's defined in the book that the asterisk, the free asterisk book. So, and you can find a lot of examples on setting up uh, extension files, programming things. Um, in this case, I want to be. I want to say if a call comes in on um, extension 222, then dial the SIP um, 222. Something like. I think that's the syntax. Let me double check. Alright, so I'm going to pick up the line. That's what that answer function does. And this is basically like the order. You, the way you, the, the order that you put the lines in here is not followed. Although this end kind of implies it. If you put an end here, then it will be followed. Otherwise, you would label it like two, three, and so forth. All right, so now we actually can, uh, should be able to reach two, two, two. So when a call is placed, it knows what to do. Hello, world. All right, so now it's actually ringing from the IX phone to the SIP phone. All right. I won't pick it up right now. Does anybody want to hear me pick it up? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know if so you saw the stuff. Two two two. Hello world. I might get some feet. That's cool. Hello. Hello. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So our first call, uh, Now we can add the other extension. Oh, I wanted to go over this. So, yeah, it's basically picking up the call, which is a little bit weird, but you can do that because if you want to do other things before you actually dial it, like playback a message, then you can do that. This is good for like the IDR. So, if you're picking up your main line in your office and you want to say, you know, for one, press, you know, for sales, press one, <coughs> for billing, press two, you would say it here, then you would. Um, program a little bit more, I'll show you how to do that later, and send the call this way or that way by using the dog function. And uh, just to go, all the functions that I'm going to be using are in this appendix B. So, let me zoom in here. So here you can start, you start seeing the functions, so we can use the answer. <laughs> So there's the answer function, and it takes a delay. You can read the details of what that one is here. Um, playback. What format is the Hello World file? And it's a GSM file, which oh, yeah. is compressed. It's a codec used for voice. Ah. GSM? GSM, sorry. Do you, guys use, do you have one that uses speech? No. There are some other, yeah. Do you know what that's used for? Speaks is a yeah. speech codec. Okay. Is it anything to do with festival or? No, it's part of the, um, it's actually part of the odd, the, um, odd containers. It's actually part of the odd codecs. Okay. It's basically, um, it's a speech codec and it's used for very, very tight compression of um, low bit rate files, like speech files. And there are a few void programs that actually make use of it. Okay. I've been trying to it might work, it might just work. Royalty yeah. free. So it's yeah, it's royalty free and uh, shamelessly play as part of the Oculus Unity. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the 
the playback function basically um, there are, there's the definition for one of the, one of the playback functions. When you install asterisk, it um, puts a bunch of sound files in var lib asterisk. So if I do a find in here, you'll see like the files that come with asterisk. Right. So you can just the ones that are under sounds, you can just point at with this short um, with that with drop the GSM and just use them in your program. Well, I'll try again this morning. <laughs> and, uh, that woman you hear talking is famous. She's called at the, the Voice. And you can like send her like fifty, a hundred dollars, and she'll read off a few sentences to you and email you the result. <laughs> and you can just put it right into your application. So my like well, my friend did that. He like really liked her voice. So he's like dial one oh one for Dan. <laughs> you, you, you can buy the, the custom uh, recordings from Allison at Digio directly, and they actually they have two people, one who's a French-speaking right. person, Michelle, I think, uh -huh. and there's Allison, who is the voice on all of the standard boy, uh, asterisk mm -hmm. situations. And it's pretty cute, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's $35 per recording. 35 per, yeah, per like, one sentence? Or I don't know how long it can be. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. It might have went up. It was really a dirt cheap one. Uh -oh. I thought it was. Okay, so we'll add the other extension here and call the other way. So I'm just going to cheat here instead of using my memory. So just one line like that. Do you want to copy all three of those lines? <laughs> You just need that one line saying if a call comes in and with the going, you know, and somebody's used extension 8101, then put just dial this phone that's registered. So you reload asterisk and start the app, this application up. Start up the IAX client and dial 8. On the SIP phone dial. Whoa. Sorry about that. That's fine. It's an interesting galaxy, galactic thermal. Yeah, it's like the Mars. Music and music and recording like that. Um, yeah, so you can see here, it's giving you the basic information about the call connection in the logs you also get that information. All right, so that's just doing internal calls. Now I wanted to show how you can actually talk to the outside world. So when I uncommented that stuff in IX when I had that this little bug and I didn't know what I was doing. Basically, this is a, a string that allows me to connect to a server here at this location mm -hmm. um, and make an IAX connection. You can also connect to junction networks using SIP, but I just prefer to use IAX. So and you can rip, if you want to steal this and use mm -hmm. all my money, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to let you make $6 with a call and that's going to fail. Um, and how much does it cost? Is it $6 a lot of them? They're a little. Yeah. Let me. One thing. So I wanted to make. One thing is a lot of people will do. Well, actually, let me cover that in a few minutes. But this is the site. This is the company that I use, JunctionNetworks.com. And and in, for incoming calls to my phone number, it's like three cents a minute. For outgoing, it's one one and a half cents a minute. So if you're not happy with whoever your cell phone provider or you know. If you're using some, somebody like Broad Voice or Vonage and you feel like they're charging, they're charging you a monthly fee and you're not using it, you can just set, this is like, this was one of my motivations for setting this up. Now I just pay for what I use and that's it. Um, they have a really good tutorial on here on how to connect to Asterisk. They're very, like a very Asterisk friendly company. A lot of places aren't. So they let you use your Asterisk server to connect to their server. That's 
and may call full rates. So that's pretty good. And here's my, here's one of their support pages that tells you how to make you know what to put in your extensions files. So you need that line, and then down here. If you follow their instructions, you need these other few lines that I have to find here. Here you're going to have, like, when a call comes in, um, you're going to, we need to create a uh, block of code called incoming to handle those calls. Uh, then you restart asterisk. I mean, reload the, the changes. Why did it say no message? I don't know. I don't know. There's so many things going on. There's like I can't know them all. But if you if you do an IAX show registry, you can actually see now that I'm registered with that server. So theoretically, uh, I could just make a call going out. I believe. I might need some more. I need this outgoing block in my extensions.com. So I save that. Reload. And um, we could try calling somebody here if anybody. Somebody want me to try to call their cell phone? Yeah, you can call me. You can call 732. What? Can you call 732? 732. 754. 754. 1003. 1003? Yeah. No. The person you were calling is going to have been one. Uh. <laughs> 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 It might be something similar to a little there should be like an outgoing definition. Maybe it's in the tour one area, but... Hold on one second. No, it's got to have the definition. Yeah, the other one had the internal outgoing. Mm -hmm. And the other one, extension called final. Extension. Yeah, that's not used. That's just my... Just go, go just a second. Just go a second. You see, include outgoing. So an internal... Yeah, that I'm going to do later. Mm. Sometimes it just takes a little while to register. Let me try calling my phone real quick. Do you need to dial the one? Yeah. yeah. Dial nine to get out? Yeah, because this definition here is saying. Or dial one. The number, the number that's being dialed coming in is a one followed by. This N doesn't have a zero. It's one through nine. Okay. The X's are zero through nine. Try two oh one. Two oh one? Two oh one. Is that your phone? Or? Yeah, two oh one. Okay, hold on one second. They break the mark. Try to the two oh one, not the one. There might be something wrong with the firewall. I didn't, I didn't test the this and some Can you have the one though down? first? Two oh one eight eight seven six four four oh. Okay, let's. What do you want to network here? They clearly tell the extension not found. It says. See, that would seem to imply that this. Um, what I can do is just like. I know this works, so I'll put it here for now. <laughs> But I didn't have a chance to test this before the lecture. Uh, last time, la when I gave the speech last week, I made sure they made an exception in the firewall. So this, 
Well, we don't have any control over that. Yeah. So it just might not work tonight because of that. Ah, there you go. All right. Well, I was just missing something in the uh, in the config file. I'm not sure yet what it was. But uh, yeah, my phone's ringing. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. So there you go. There you go. Well, if anybody wants to figure it out, they can look at the comp files online. Mm -hmm. So what kind of latency usually happens when you go through asterisk and something like you know, junction networks and all the other things that you're talking about. I mean, the, the issue you're going to have is there's so many little pieces of the puzzle. Right. Right? Like, first you have a phone going to Astros. So how is that network? Are you sharing it with a data network? Do you want to separate your voice network from your data network? Usually the voice is really a small amount of network traffic. Right. Mm -hmm. But if somebody starts downloading something all of right. a sudden, and you're using that. So then you have asterisk going to the internet, then you have... Um, junction networks going to the internet, then you have junction networks going to the phone system. No, like the, so, so, so like the overwhelming thing is going to be network latency, but what about latency at each, what about server latency, what about like asterisk latency, and then... Oh, like how much processor power does it need? Well, does that even become an issue, or no, it's just it so dwarfed by network latency? I think it's really, really small. Yeah, okay. At the beginning, like the second chapter of the book, they give you a little chart of oh, like okay. if you had a, a five users, fifty users, a thousand, ten thousand I mean it's like you don't need you need a really old box to handle like fifty people. Yeah. Really old yeah. box. Yeah. And I think you like a hundred megabit connection would be fine too. Like. So standard it's like not you can use like a mid a mid level box and you have a, a standardized, you know, mid level connection you can still get it, right? So it works well enough? I mean, I, I can't say like a blank is safe. You know? I mean, you got you're gonna have to get into quality of service. You're gonna have to test things out. You know, try to find out where the bottleneck is if you have issues. Uh, I use uh, Fedora Talk, which is the asterisk service that Fedora provides for interpreters. Okay. And you can hold quite the amount of services on that. And I have no Which uh, special interest. 1.5 down So you're letting them handle all the issues? Well, it, it's a, uh, yeah. So, so Fedora hosts an asterisk server for all their contributors. All the same. Okay. And uh, then, uh, then you have a phone at home, you just register with their server? Yeah. Okay. So then, instead of having like this, I'm having, I have a server right here. A company can just set up a server and let people use phones at home to connect to that server if they get all the natting right and the firewall stuff right. You can have phones all over the world just connecting with that one server, and then that server needs some way of getting to the PSTN. Um, this is more of a configuration question. When you were looking at that, you know that section was underscore N1 X. Can you talk about that a little bit? Is that some sort of pattern matching? Yes. Yeah, so that, I mean, I don't want to get into the details of well, that, but yeah, there's a pattern matching. Well, that you say route calls going to you know, a specific country code for a specific connection. That's what it's there for. Yeah, right? well, basically you want to limit what people can do. Like, can they make a long distance call? Can they make a long distance national call? Can they make a international call? So each section you would put a definition of what the people... Um, like, that's basically what that include statement was. Do you have that kind of granular? See this include route? statement here? Yeah. So if I take this out mm -hmm. uh, and reload asterisk, mm -hmm. nobody will be able to call the outside world. So you could have an international definition, a block of code that defines international calls. Mm -hmm. And then you just say include international, and all of a sudden what, people can make those what calls. What is the set of criteria you can sort by? And is it just is it just the outgoing phone number? Can you make exceptions based on time of day? Can you make exceptions based on time of day? Yeah, um, there, there, these functions in the book that are defined in the book, well, there's time, date functions. I worked at a place and like they wanted to have a meeting, so they like shut down the phone system and route all the calls to voicemail from 11 to 3 p.m. And then we know we're coming back, 
set it up all ahead of time, like a week ahead of time, and the system just did it, switched over, or maybe Christmas vacation, you want to like, have all these exceptions. Well, you don't want to do it on the fly, you just use these functions to set, you know, a month ahead of time, just use all the functions to, to say, at this particular time, we're switching over, at this particular time, we're switching back to the regular routing of phone calls. Final, just quick question. Is, is there a similar level of, of matching you can do on any company using match on the source uh, caller ID or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, you, you don't want your, there's like a joke they make that, like, a Disney movie's like, you want to blacklist your girlfriend's number, you just put it in there and send her right to, you know, to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really easy to blacklist people who are direct certain calls, like, if it's your, you know, you want Dan's wife to just be able to reach him directly, you know, put her all right. <coughs> Generally, they're pretty flexible. I was working with a client here in the city, and they could establish the overlay, and you had to now start that in one for the code. And so I, I did a program with PBX, so if it's like it's three or seven digits, they served one, two, one, and two in front of it. So the people at their desk, you know, they were trying to make that more like four, but they still make them that way. You can do the outbound uh, routes also based on prefixes and have multiple SIP trunk providers. So let's say you have a better international rate for when people dial 100 code 44 to get to the UK. You could have a UK based trunk provider. Uh, I have relatives in Scandinavia, so I have a Danish SIP trunk provider. Some people call me, they call me, they call the Danish number, and it rings in my office basically. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, round so the call, so I set up a tr what's called a trunk here with junction networks. That's so you have multiple trunk, 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 trunk providers, trunk. and you can, you can mix and match also with the PSDN and have your know, yeah. chat and telephony right. and regular lines coming in. And you can route based on any set of criteria. Basically. And is there actually a, a day night mode uh, yeah. macro set you can uh, implement yeah. that does the switching for so that? In the Monday to Friday, to use 9 to 5, it is about and and one IDR and yeah. about a time to write a graph, so a different IDR, you know, totally like programmable. Thank you. So, yeah, so what we set up there with Junction Networks is called a trunk. The other option you would have is to buy cards from Digium, like a common card people get mm -hmm. in the beginning for small offices, a card with four <laughs> ports for regular phone lines. And now you have an interface to the phone system in your Astro server via that PCI card. They, they even sell uh, uh, trunk cards uh, that support up to a benefit of 24 lines per card. And they also sell T1 slash E1 one line cards. And they even have cards, a small form factor, that have two T1 uh, and one connected. Yeah, so like for our five hundred dollars, you can get the four analog card for like eight hundred, nine hundred, T one, T one with like what is it, eight six hundred, six hundred, basically. If you want, except if you want echo cancellation filled in on the chipset itself, and it's like eight to three hundred dollars. That's helpful. Yeah, so where I work, he has like a T one there. We plug it into Asterisk via the car. You gotta do like some mod probing, mod probing to get the drivers up, mm. and then you gotta compile something called Zaptel separately, but it's also freely available and it's released by Digium. Mm -hmm. And then you just start defining your trunks and how to handle those calls. Like one thing they do is they have all these 800 numbers coming in. They look at the caller ID and then route the call. Like if you're calling from New York, you call that 800 number, they're gonna direct you to a local business. Like you know, you call like a 1-800 pizza number and you're going to get Joe's Pizza. If you're in Alabama, you call that same 800 number, they look at your caller ID and they, you know, direct you to some pizza company in Montgomery, Alabama. How do you get caller ID information from the public telephone network? Um, I mean, even if they're blocking, actually I just found this out, even if they're blocking, when they dial an 800 number, they're basically giving up their rights to block the number. Because so. you're paying for it. That, that's a different service also. Yeah. I, think on the I think of what they call that, but that's a different service they sell okay. to the telemarketers. They get your number even if you block it. Yeah, if you dial an 800 number, it's not worth blocking. It won't help. So, 
So one issue you're going to run into if you want to not go through the PSTN directly, if you want to go through one of these VoIP providers like Junction Networks or there's another one called VoIPJet, is a lot of them just want to work for call centers who are dialing out and you'll pay like one and a half cents. But very few of them want to like actually give you a phone number and take calls for you. And that's what Junction Networks was one of the rare companies I found that would do it. So if you're going to do this, you want to so probably saying use them. So you it was a twice the uh, cost of the uh, outgoing call. Yeah, 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 it's double to get a call coming in. To have a, the phone number is really cheap, like $7 to register, and that's a couple dollars a month. It's really dirt cheap. But that's what's origination. Let me see if I can get it. So there's origination and termination. Those are the two terms. One's going out, one's coming in. And then I got this definition like from Wikipedia and I thought it was amusing because it doesn't make any sense at all. Because the phone system people, like their perspective, they used a definition from a certain perspective that is completely confusing. But So you don't have to read this, maybe you can download it later. But I drew this diagram to basically get the message across. On the left side is termination. You have an Astro server, you're dialing out to the real PSTN, to a phone number, like your mother, right? So, but with origination, you actually have a phone number where somebody can call the PSTN and it can get routed to you. So that's the difference. It's pretty simple. So termination, a million people do. Origination, I've only found one. I haven't looked that hard, but put that on. All right, so the last thing I can show is the uh, IVR. Oh, um, and somebody could actually call my phone if you want to try. I will. Okay. So we can test an incoming okay, call. Okay, what is it? Um, one five zero three five two three one six one two. Yeah, you have your next slide phone open. I think it is. You get anything? Press one. I think it's still also. Okay. Um, Let me try mine. So Press two. Well, let's do this. Let's two, 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 see how you. Do this. I commented out this dial <laughs> because. <laughs> so let's uncomment that and, and comment out this IVR that I set up. I'm going to save this file. Reload. Okay. Is it now, now try calling. Okay. Call the number again. All right, I'm calling. I'm okay, calling. I got it. You got a race for it. <laughs> I think it's, it takes multiple calls at once. Oh, okay. that's fine. So you can see yep. that's yeah, another thing that Junction Networks did that was really cool, and that's cool that you both called because they can show it. I didn't even think about doing <laughs> but that. But you're blocking it though. So I'm, you can like, like supposedly have eight calls coming in and handle all of them. What well, why is it that you need multiple lines? You can see the phones are ringing and two different caller IDs. <laughs> and I, can, I mean, if, like five people want to try calling, we can test the system. Did anybody get the number? <laughs> like trying to max it out. Okay. It's 503 523 1612. How long does it hang until it gets up? Five, two, three. I think it'll. I don't, know, I don't have voicemail set up, so just like go through. Oh, you're cheesy. You don't have voicemail set up? Oh, oh come on well, now. I can show you how to set up voicemail pretty easily, but I just forgot to do it in the last download and I was really lazy this week. Well, all you can do is just put your phone number in there. Well, we'll set a call. It's going to miss a call. It's limited by the number of inbound trunks. Yeah, I guess. Oh, it's limited. Well, everybody is busy. Oh, this is here. This is here. Everybody's gone. <laughs> like I, I think Junction Network is over promising on that right. aspect, well, but at least we got two at once. Well, typically it depends on the plane you get with the uh, I got sick three, yeah. provider. They will typically tell you get max number of uh, concurrent calls of right. course, per uh, trunk basically. So right. if you have a standard commercial SIP trunk, it's limited only by your bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ty typical providers mm -hmm. such as Junction Network, Telesit, Teleac, whatever, for an inexpensive home line, it will give you one or two of them. Yeah, that's it.
Anyway, feel free to keep trying if you want to test it. Anyway, um, well, the last thing I'm going to do here is show you the IVR that I set up. Now we got to call and see. Oh, now I'm coming on mine too. Hey, move that jacket a minute. Move the jacket. Oh, there we go. Multiple are coming in. Right, we got two before. I'm sorry, you guys didn't see that. Yeah, we got two before, but I don't know if we got three or four. I'm getting busy. Busy? Yeah, I I'm getting I'm busy. Ma matching it too. But maybe it's X light, the one that is matching. Yeah, there we go. There, sir. Can you set up the conference call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you put the well, IVR? Like, one more time. Um, we're going to call and see how many. What was it with comp? Oh, you know, so there's a trick with the meat needs to be functioning doesn't come with Function does the conference calling, and you need Zaptel. Yeah, no, I'm getting a busy feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not using a card, so if you had a card, then. Well, you, you can have a, a focus Zaptel compiled so that uh, you know you have only six this prompts. Is pretty cool. You just need the module compiled, basically. Oh, you that's all you need. need compiled. You don't actually have to be using it. No, you just. Okay. Okay. So I, I guess I can only handle two at once because I'm still getting busy. I'll look for okay. that. Put yeah, the okay. idea on track. No, does that tell us it's the typical software that you use? Ignore! 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 Anyway, so I'm gonna, now I'm going to route the call wait, to an wait, IVR instead. Wait, the, the internal, it says 222 and playback, hello world, that means that whatever you write in there, it'll play when you're dialing, right? Yeah, we got that before. When I The first call I made, it like, picked up and said, hello world, so that's what that was. We put something alternately very silly Here's there? like a 888, if I want to do like a test recording, it, it's going to go to this, so here I'm saying go to this block of code called test record, and here it is, right? Yeah. It's going to, it's going to, okay, I can show you that, let's say Pennsylvania, you want to hear it? So How can you block a number? So it's going to record to temp slash name dot gsm. And then there's some other parameters there you can look up for that function. It's going to play it back after I hit the pound sign, and then it's going to hang up. What's this? What this is good for if you want to like create your IVR on the fly using your phone. Um, then you have a file temp dot slash name dot gsm, and you can just move it into place. You just put it under bar libs asterisk sounds, and you just start using it. So. Like, if you, you want to say, oh, like, well, sorry, we're all out of the office at, on a picnic, you just call this, record it, move it into place, and program your IVR, and you're, you're done. How do you block a number? Well, to block, all you would do is say, if you go up here and on incoming, you would just say, if, it's a, if it matches a certain pattern, like whatever your phone number is, uh -huh. I would just put your exact phone number in here. And then I could send it, you know, wherever I want, to voicemail, or just, like, hang up hang up immediately. I can just use the hang up function here. So, so let me test 888 out. You guys can listen. <coughs> testing, testing, testing. So there. So I'm also recording with asterisk through my phone. You know, and I could let you guys, like, I could route it to that, and then you guys could call in, press 888, you know. I'd have to make it prompt you and all that. Okay. So if you make too many calls and they can actually connect, so I'm going to run out of money, but... So here's the IVR that I programmed. Okay. I don't care if they're running out of money, it's just, just letting you know. It might not work. But it's only when the call connects that you get charged anyway, so I think you guys are just, it's not picking up, so it doesn't matter. So I made this IVR, it's basically going to ring, wait a little while, pick up the phone, and then this Allison woman, well it's going to sign, then Allison's going to say press 1 for sales, um, wait a little while, press 2 for accounting, blah blah blah, and then here's, let's see, where's the... So the first, you can see you have a, I have a one here in the beginning. That's basically saying if the person presses a one, go into this block of code. The first thing you do, play some silence, say the word sales, say thank you for calling, and then go back up to the, this is basically saying go back up to the top here. 
Ooh, and start over again. So that's a loop. Then I have another loop if I press two, and then another loop if I press three. So let's try it out. Just, so you guys can hear it. I'm going to do it here. We just saw seven, seven, seven. So I made it 100 here. I made the extent. So this is actually an extension. 100 goes to my IVR. I can make it anything I want to do. Press one. Up sales. Press two for accounting. Press three for billing. Press one. Oh. There's also like a timeout. Sales. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. So that's a fake ring. I just said ring. It's totally fake, right? Press one. Press three. 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 What is that? That's great. Come on. Billy. You sound cute. Actually, maybe it says, your wallet is ours. Well, what I want to do is like, I did, gave this lecture last week and this guy said he had a bunch of haunted house, house sounds and he's going to send them to me and then I could like program this IVR to like you're walking in the, you know, you haunted house, press adventure. one to go forward, press two to go back. Yeah, you went to the adventure from the phone. <laughs> so it's like, you know, the horrible adventure that Bill Gates first programmed or whatever. I don't know. Start that all over again with phone systems and then get, put the number out there. I think kids would love it. I probably spent like a thousand dollars that week. You remember the days when they used to do that through the 900 numbers? They used to be 395 the first minute and 35 cents or like the dollar each edition. Oh, minute. yeah, I could make money. Yeah, and your parents would kill you after the phone bill came. <laughs> that. I that. <laughs> then I have my remember I really good experience. Hmm? Some wrong experience? Yeah, personal experience. I tried one of those. I signed up for copy service at 300 bucks in one month. <laughs> All right, so I think that's the end. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you had some experience with estrus now, Gooey? Yeah, and that's like what I gave my first lecture with. Yeah. And that's great. I mean, you just I'm take a CD, stick it in a server, you install a complete operating system. It takes over the phone. And then anywhere in the office, you hit that IP address and you get a web interface. You log in and you can tweak all of these things, but you never have to program anything. It's all through a web interface. So, so does it limit any of the functionality? In what? Does it limit any of the functionality you have with the uh, community? Well, if you want to do fancy things, it is, but you can do almost everything you can imagine. Like, you can make groups, you can ring multiple phones at once. I mean, all the stuff we did tonight, for sure. Plus, yeah. they pretty much thought of everything through that GUI. Yeah. What product are you talking about? Asterisk Now. Yeah. So, Asterisk Now, did you? What happened is, there was something called Asterisk at Home, and some guys just put it together. Well, that's what they made it seem like. A bunch of guys just programmed this thing on the fly. <laughs> And then it turned into TrickBox, which is like run by some multi-millionaire, maybe billionaire, like flies jet planes, and jet fighter planes and stuff. And he's basically took the whole asterisk and home code and made TrickBox. So it's a complete install with a lot of functionality. Well, Trick, TrickBox is really sent OS, free PPX, yeah. MySQL, and yeah. server CRM all bundled together. Yeah. Uh, but and the, the free PPX part of the code is P PHP scripting right. that takes over and makes a web GUI out of the whole thing and it's absolutely beautiful. But uh, there's a better distribution, in my opinion, called PPS in a flash. It doesn't have any of the nasty code and uh, okay. that is not fully disclosed in TrickBox. Now they are. It's Finality, by the way, that uh, runs TrickBox and it's okay. the open source free version and they have the support okay. version. Right. Yeah. Both PPS in a flash. It's one ISO you download and it, it basically wipes out whatever you have on your drive and it 
and called send OS and the free PBX, the asterisk component, the exact component, everything you want to stop. It's free PBX? Huh? It's free PBX? Uh, free PBX is the, the web inside of that's, the the guru, that's part okay. of the whole distribution, but it's right. send OS, free right. PBX, uh, the server CRM. Like so, TV. so Digium wanted to catch, decided they, you know, this is an obvious market, so they kind of wanted to catch up with Asterisk mm -hmm. now. I've done, that's another thing you can just download here, build it in like five minutes, and then if you know how to tweak Apache a little bit, all of a sudden you have an Apache interface to all this stuff from Digium. They kind of outsourced it to RPATH, another company that makes like a complete Linux install in the system. So you can also like in take over your server. That's another way you can do it. Just boot off the disk and install it on your server. But you can also just build it here and run it that way. What was the name of that? The GUI? So free PBX is like the total open source web GUI, but it's integrated into Trixbox, the Trixbox and server installation. It's also integrated into what is it? PBX on a flash. And um, and I I think Asterisk now is Asterisk now is a, like from scratch. They built <coughs> it's a web interface as well, but it's by Digium instead. Actually, I have another question for you. How high end hardware do you need to run this? How um, much? It, what kind of hardware does one need? Uh, specifically, well, I'm thinking about the. You don't need any hardware, and that's what I think is really amazing, right? But if, well, well, in terms of the server that you're running all this on. Oh, okay. I, like that's something somebody kind of asked that before. But if you look in the. Like I don't know if you're familiar with Socrus boxes, yeah. low powered. Little um, embedded systems. Oh, you want to run on something really small? Is that? Has um, anyone here done that? Well, let's look at. Let's look at this specification. There, is, there are CPU ramifications if you're doing a uh, okay, very code you and you need serious compression, like G729 compression, so you will need a faster CPU. Mm -hmm. Do you have do you these specifications? Oh. Like this one? Haven't I read about like people running open firmware on their Linux routers and, and access to the routers? You think you can run there's an open firmware that you can get yeah, in place. Yeah. Not surprised, but yeah, question. Right. Yeah. Basically, what you would be a right asterisk in your router, you'll have like a line. If you don't have these routers, like I said, they're like OpenWRT, EDWRT, they all have asterisks. Software that you can run on your Linux router. Well, to, get like to make phone calls, you take phone calls. You don't need anything but a network, and then you use a voice service. No, but why would you even need anything running on your uh, an Asterisk server running on your router as opposed to Maybe you can buy an Asterisk client on your laptop or whatever. And you can buy for ten dollars. You know, instead of buying a server for fifty dollars, some junky server, you buy that. Maybe people are throwing them away because it's an old model. I don't know. There was a um, special model of the Linksys router with two analog phone jack ports in it. Yeah, yeah. That would run. There was one. There was. The problem is the block or the monitor. Yeah. No, it's called that. Yeah, really well, a lot of these things you gotta you gotta realize Asterisk is a PBX in and of itself, and then it does void. So one of the advantages, like if you go with Broad Voice or Lodge, you're going to pay for every little additional service. If you run an asterisk, you have complete control of all these amazing functionalities, the thousands of functionality, thousands of things you can do. So if you go with a normal web provider, you're going to have to pay them for every little step of the way, and maybe a lot of things aren't even going to be available to you. Sorry, two unrelated questions. One, do you know if there are if there if there's any support anywhere in the world for hardware or how to sell it? There are there are clones I know of of the Digium hardware, but you should be careful because I should I don't I bought with one once and it was not a big one. I'll take that but I'm not gonna do that. Other than that, like you can use Angoma or yeah, yeah. Very popular.
Yeah, what I showed you tonight is I, I showed you soft phones connecting asterisks. I you couldn't get a SIP phone right here plugged into that network. You know, set, right. bring up this web interface, point it at this IP address, type in the extension password, and it will register with asterisks, and you can pick it up like a real phone, right? So, and then final question, totally unrelated. Is there any functionality, I'm guessing not, to call external programs when you're doing that pattern matching? Mm -hmm. So let's let's say I did set set up some sort of complex blacklist and I wanted to sort of bring it. Is there any ability to rather than have to program it in line for line match it specific phone numbers oh. to call an external program? Free PPX has a module, blacklist module, it's the same. If you look in here, there's see this asterisk asterisk um, gateway interface. Yeah. You can yeah. use Python, Perl, okay. Java, blah blah, blah anything to control yeah. asterisks. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Who wrote the book? Oh, wow. Well, it's a free download. So this is like a free download bill of Safari, right? It's free, it's like free download. Yeah. After? Yeah. book. Oh, the book, yeah. First, and then I asked for some cross platform. Right? What? What's that? Yeah, I'll just put it Any Unix platform? Well, thanks. Fun. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>